Greetings, you've landed. Greetings, you've landed at the VUC, IP Communications and VoIP Community. We would like to thank Simwood.com for their support. Simwood can turn you as a developer into a telco. Our hosted PBX is from OnSIP.com. You can go to GetOnSIP.com for a URL people can click to call you. We've been privileged over the last five years to be using the best conference bridge on the planet. Yes, I'm talking about ZipDX.com, full-color, full-featured, full-HD conference bridge. Our website, VUC.me on the web, is hosted by Bluehost.com. And our worldwide local rate dial-ins are from Voxbone.com. And why don't we savor that animation that we're looking at right now that Michael took the trouble to make and that actually comes from the uh, website, which is at thisisdrum.com. I'm going to introduce Lawrence Chandler right away, and we'll get into our topic. Here's Lawrence. Lawrence, uh, great to have you with us. It's been a long time uh, organizing this. Hi, yeah, yeah, thanks for having us. It has indeed. Um, I believe it's, it's, it's been around the last five months. We've been, been in discussions, and now we, we, we're finally here. You know, we finally uh, got over the finish line with our, our embeddable web meeting solution. So we want to kind of discuss exactly the, the solution itself and why we've we've taken the route to, to embed a web meeting inside your existing service rather than looking to a standalone solution. Right. Well, I'm really glad. I'm really pleased that we finally did get this together. And I want to ask you, first of all, because I was a little bit confused when we first started talking, uh, our uh, the original name that I saw everywhere and that was recommended to us by important people, by the way, like Sagi from his uh, blog, Geek Me. Uh, he loves this thing. And I don't know whether to call it drum web meetings or share anywhere. So let's clear that up before we even talk about the company. The company is drum. Is that right? Or tell me about that. Clear sure. that up for me. Sure, sure. Okay, so, uh, so, so it's probably best to give you uh, a quick background of Drum uh, to maybe clarify you know, the, the potential confusions there. So we, we was initially, initially formed back in 2011, uh, around the same time as WebRTC, and we did create our solution Drum Web Meetings, um, version 1. And then across the years, we've we've redeveloped the solution and we did get it to market. But what we decided to do is actually go back to drawing boards, completely redevelop the solution uh, and have really two parts of, of the offering. So our main offering is the web meeting solution. However, there is an, an additional, an alternative way to take our web meeting capability, which is share anywhere. So the, the overarching company is This Is Drum um, and This Is Drum owns and runs drum web meetings and drum share anywhere. Um, so, so really, both two can come together uh, as one solution. So you can have your, your web meetings operating in the background with share anywhere embedded inside your website. Um, however, today we, we, we're here to talk about drum share anywhere, uh, the the embeddable web meeting solution. Then hopefully you can uh, have us back at, at a later date to talk about web meetings and how these two work together. Sure, that sounds good. All right, well, let's run through a little bit. Uh, first of all, if you want to talk about the history of the, uh, the, the actual product or if you want to just get into a demo, this is up to you. Okay, okay. so, so I, I, th I thought what would be really good here today, um, so we, we ha do actually have a Slack integration. So I thought what we could do, uh, I could start off with a Slack integration and use that to really create the meeting, join the meeting. I'll then have a, a quick presentation which will give you a bit more of a background about Drum, uh, about Share Anywhere. Then we can go on and talk about the product itself um, and to actually you know, highlight each key feature. I don't want to spend too long on this, so I'd much rather us have an open discussion. Um, but really, I want to give us, you know, get 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 the message across first. Mhm. Mm okay. Well, let's uh, let's get that going then. Okay. So let me just share my screen. So what you should be seeing here now is my my Slack feed. Uh, I do have a, a specific channel for for today's meeting. So to create uh, a drum instant meeting. All we do is slash drum, press enter, and then it will give us our unique meeting URL. So from this here, we can just go into our meeting, 
takes us straight into drum and here we are so because because drum is all browser based it means that we, we don't require any downloads at any stage apart from when you do choose to um, share, share your screen which is an additional functionality which we'll discuss later on so really the meeting host and the meeting users come straight into the meeting area so prior to the meeting starting we actually get given a you know some, some certain set criteria functionality uh, to choose from so we can choose to have our audio on or off we decide to lock the meeting or unlock the meeting now when the meeting is locked all meeting attendees will go into a waiting room um, rather than coming straight into the meeting so this really is to increase the security of the meeting and to ensure we only have who we want inside the meeting and then when we do have guests coming into the meeting area and um, this will give us a list here to decide okay this is who is in the, in the waiting area who do we want to come in and who do we want to wait finally here we, we get our, our shareable meeting URL so if, if we don't necessarily have someone inside slack we can just share that URL um, through either email or social media and they can just follow the same route as we as we did with slack and come straight into the meeting so what I'm going to do, because because we're already on audio here, I'm going to start the meeting uh, with, with audio off, just so then there's no confusion with, with our channels. So as you can see here, because I've chosen not to use a browser-based browser functionality, we, can, we do actually have a, a PSTN version as well to dial into the meeting. So this is our local dialing number. Um, at present, we only have a UK number, um, but we are waiting to, to have our clusters installed for US and Australia and 10 other countries, um, which I'm sure Peter can maybe confirm at a later stage today if you're interested. So if I just take this meeting area into full screen, so then we, we can really allow us to, to dominate the screen here today. So I suppose really the one feature we're going to focus on initially is uploading files. Just so then we can get a presentation into the meeting area, I can give you a quick overview of Drum. Mm -hmm. So what we can do is that we actually have two options. Um, of, of uploading files in the, into the meeting. We can drag and drop, so we, we, we can drag them straight in from uh, from your desktop or, or wherever they may be, or we can actually, um, as you can see here, upload from most major cloud storage providers. So today I'm going to use Google Drive. Just so then I, you can see here that we come straight into my Google, Google Drive. I can come straight down to our, our presentation. I can click, make sure it is the right presentation, and then just upload into the meeting. So whilst we wait for that to upload, quickly converts for us. And there we are. So as you can see here, as the files are uploaded into the meeting, we actually get a preview box to our our right hand side and um, what, what we can do we can actually go, go into more of a, a full screen mode here so we, we can see the document in its full glory really so we can just quickly scroll through and be like yep that's definitely the file we want to present so we can close that present the file now what we're doing is that we're actually presenting these slides into the meeting area so let me let me let me just just kick off here um, with, with with a bit bit of a background a story about Drum. So Drum, as mentioned before, um, was was formed back in 2011 uh, with the concept of really creating effortless web meetings, meetings without any downloads or system requirements. It really is a click and enter. So Drum Share Anywhere is uh, an, an additional add-on or as a separate product to to Drum Web Meetings. And Drum really provides the embeddable, instant secure web meeting solution inside your branded experience. So as you're aware, um, Formed 11, we're actually based in, on the south coast in Brighton. So this image here, I did want to put up a nice sunny image, but that, that wouldn't represent Brighton. So um, so it, it is, it's a snowy image and you know we, we do have our beach huts here and, and, and Pebbly uh, beaches, which is very nice in the summer. Um, so based in Brighton, yeah, uh, we we are a, a team around eight to ten, with 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 specialists on board such, such as UX UI, um, as we have on our call, our head of product development and technology. So we we, we was initially initially uh, part of a larger company called NetDev, and we was a, a product offering on NetDev. But as we have grown part of Drum, we've actually separated into our own company and become a, a separate entity. 
So as, as I use the, these nav navigation buttons down the bottom, I can take you on to say, well, what are the technologies uh, being used here and uh, which the user gets to experience from? So we actually utilize HTML5 or CSS3 uh, pri pri primarily. Now, we do have these images kind of proportionate to, to one another because although we do utilize Web, um, WebRTC and it is part of our solution, we don't like to say that that is our solution, that is the core of our solution because really our core solution is being browser-based and being responsive within your browser. So drawing in our expertise on these solutions, we've, we have extended from web meetings into Share Anywhere. So what is Share Anywhere? So Share Anywhere, as I have vaguely touched on it, is, is a solution which with either two versions, JS or or, or HTML, you can embed web meetings directly in, into your website, existing service, or your existing portal. So, for instance, um, your, your website could be a consultancy website, and you, you, you need to come in and you need to meet your clients one on one on a regular basis rather than going off to a, a third party application. Um, and experience the third-party applications brand, you can actually have your clients experience your brand inside your brand's experience. So not only do they have the brand experience, but also inside your branded URL. Now, in addition, uh, you could, uh, when embedding this inside a CRM, for instance, this then actually reduces the number of login credentials and does provide a value-added service to an already popular service, such as, for instance, Salesforce. So th this would sit inside uh, the CRM system and there'll be a specific tab for meetings or it will be in a specific lead, for instance, where you can click in there, create a meeting and just interact with that lead. So as I mentioned, there are two methods of embedding this solution, um, HTML and JS. Both are fairly straightforward. Now I like to say one line of code, um, but there is a few more lines of code than one. Um, but it is very, fairly simple. It is it is very simple. Uh, a copy and paste. We we generate the, the, the doc documentation for you. We set the parameters, give you your own unique API key, and then you're off. Embed it. Now you this does mean that the user authentication isn't managed by us. And typically speaking, it'd be managed by the existing service. So if you are to have it on your website. Initially, you would have a button to start a meeting, and people would then enter that meeting. So, what about integrations? Um, it's all well having you know Share Anywhere or Drum by itself, but with the kind of market changing and, and technology is always improving, app stores, API stores are growing importance. Um, it's about having applications working together, which is why, as demonstrated earlier, we've actually um, develop the Slack integration. So as you can see, Slash Drum gets you straight into a drum meeting. So then you can kick things off and go straight forward. It actually suits the Slack model as well and suits these online services where it is browser-based, it is effortless. It does mean that you don't have to worry about signing in again. You know, you don't have to remember signing in to, to X, Y, and Z and A, B, and C. I know here, we, we, we have our own uh, spreadsheet for all of our lo login credentials and the hassle it goes just to go back and say, oh yeah, let's get the login credential for this, so let's get the login credential for that. And I think the market and, uh, is really moving into, I suppose, a, a login free place where you don't have to re-log in. You just have your one login credential. There, there will be future in integrations happening, uh, such as Sugar CRM, uh, which will be one, uh, and Zero the, the accounting as well. Just uh, worth mentioning maybe that uh, we generally use Wire, which does not have this kind of integration like Slack does. But we're also right now temporarily using a thing called Spark from Cisco. And um, Spark does have ways of integrating. You'd have to look at it to figure out what. But um, they integrate with a couple of things. Just want to mention that along the way. I don't okay. know how big Spark will be either, but it's there. Okay. Okay. Thanks uh, for the heads up. Yeah, I'm. I'm sure, like many of these things, it, it is a lot about putting a theater out there uh, for these big companies to make sure integrations there. I, I, I will. I expect that larger companies will go down the integration route in terms of making sure at least their solution talks with other solutions effortlessly, um, rather than having to click off and click back in. So that, that, that's really the presentation I want us to, to go through in terms of uh, the product background 
and the the company back back runner. Right I don't want to talk for too long, and um, there's only no. so much people want to listen about. No, so, but before we lose that, before we leave that screen, maybe you could show off a couple of the icons up there because I, I looked through these earlier today, and they're they're nicely done. Um, like on the left, there's a uh, there's info people and so on. Of course, there's sure. not many people in this meeting, but, but uh, <laughs> actually, I was going to call in, and then the pin disappeared because you moved to another slide. I don't want to interrupt. Oh, sorry. Uh, but um, yeah, go ahead and uh, and explain that. They're perfectly visible to me. I hope people. It's small. I hope people can read it. But it says this is just the info of the dial-in number, the two pins, and um, of course you're the host, so you're seeing everything. I presume that the average, the attendees don't see all that information. Precisely, precisely. So um, so this is the host view uh, from from looking at it as as the full management rights of the meeting. So what we have here is out of our features and our, our meeting information is set around the outside of the presentation to ensure that really everyone who has entered the meeting, their main focus is is what matters and, that, and that's what's being presented into the meeting. So as we as, as we come down the left hand side here, as you mentioned, we do have our info tab. Now the info tab is just really a meeting overview. So it will just provide you with your basic meeting information, who it's hosted by, who's attended, uh, your your specific dial-in number, and your PIN. Just below that, we, we do have the meeting URL. Now this this is beneficial to have inside here. Um, I've many time I've, I've I've been inside meetings with with our marketing guys, and we think, hey, you know what? We need to, we, we need a couple of sales guys to come in. Let's just share the meeting URL, send it over, so they can get straight into the meeting. We don't need to share any PINs. We don't need to find PINs. We just copy, paste, and we're off. Then, as you mentioned, we, we do come down to our people tab, which uh, isn't highly populated at present. But this this is where you would have all of your meeting hosts, presenters, and attendees. So I'll, I'll, I'll just provide you with a quick overview of, of the three different roles. So your meeting chair here is is the host, is is the person who ultimately owns the meeting, their full own ownership of the meeting. And then we have the the presenter. Now presenters are meeting attendees who have been promoted. So presenters would have the option to upload documentation to present into the meeting and take control of proceedings in terms of presenting into the area. So, so if I if I have a our content marketer here who wants to discuss a, a certain couple of pieces and then present their their content strategy, they can take over proceedings, upload a couple of documentation, then present into the meeting. Once they're finished, we can then downgrade them again to a meeting attendee, and they can just view the meeting. And then the meeting attendee, as mentioned, really is just a meeting viewer. They will just look into the meeting. They they can um, communicate via audio um, and via text, but ultimately they're there to view. If I was going to put if I was going to put you on the spot, Lawrence, I'd tell you to paste <laughs> the invite into the hangout, and Andy would go join the meeting so we could show the mute and eject and so on. Okay. Um, how quickly you know how to uh, get into the hangout chat? It's, uh, it's just uh, it's the first icon on top. Andy, can you do that? I think he can. Yes, he says yeah, he can. Yeah. If yeah, I can just... <laughs> this is live with no net. <laughs> so I, I, I do have... Um, I, I don't appear to have the option here. Uh, well, actually, you're, it's because you're sharing the screen. You need to go back to just for a second. Well, no, you don't have to change anything, actually. But it's the, on the left, it's the top one. The chat is the very top icon. It's got a, like a balloon. Oh, okay. Uh, and we'll I, go back to the share as soon as this is done. Okay. Um, I'm only presented with the screen share. I don't have the balloon option there. Uh, okay, that's strange. The it's on the left. You see a strip of icons on the left, right? Yep. And you have this. Did you you ended the share? So there should be a whole bunch of icons. There should be share. Uh, first one's chat, second one's share, then there's Q and A. Uh, okay. Well, some of these so, are for for host only, but. Okay, so I've I've got screen share, showcase, Q and A, control room, and oh, hangout toolbox. So when we bring up a. Oh, that's weird. I don't know why you don't have that. Okay, chat well, my chat bad. Work. Chat works differently in Brighton, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's the snow, right? All right, well, I'm sorry I interrupted now because that would have been funny. Um, the only hey. other way to do it is by email. 
Yeah, what I can do, I can. We can just sign. talk. Look, we can. I don't want to waste any more time on this, Lawrence. I'm sorry. We can. Uh, what we can do is we can. Sorry, Randy. Yeah. Randy, it's Corrado here from uh, yeah, go ZTX. Yeah, uh, Hi. Probably uh, there's at the end of all the icons, there's a, 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 a so, sort of um, drawer you can open, and probably the chat option is in one of those drawers. That could be. That could be. There is a dot dot dot, whatever those are called. Yeah. Yes. There is a dot dot dot, and it allow me to add some apps, but I I can't seem to see the application there. Oh wait a so, minute. Okay, just a second though. You've got it. You sent it to me, so let me grab uh -huh. this, and I will copy it and put it into yet another technology. And Andy will see it on uh, whatever that's called. Spark. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's with S. Uh, otherwise, and uh, thank you, uh, Corrado, for that. Uh, otherwise, I was going to say no we worries. could just talk it through, but um, since we have it now, let me get rid of the chat. Uh, and we're still on Lawrence. So, if Andy, if you can get in there, you will pop up on this people list, I guess. Then we can eject you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, all this for that, right? It's just to show what it looks like. It's very nicely done. There's a mute and eject. Definitely, um, definitely. So I, I have locked the meeting. Um, so then we can actually see here. Okay, when we're notified that Andy's joining the meeting, we actually give the option instantly to allow or, or, mm -hmm. or kick them in the in the top right hand side. Excellent. So just just by clicking on the name here, uh, it does then present us with the option to to join or kick. So on this occasion, we will allow Andy to join. <laughs> and yeah, then, there's Andy. Exactly. There, there's Andy. So at the moment, Andy is, is, is just a meeting attendee. Um, but what we can do, we, we can just promote Andy to a presenter. So as we can see there, now, now his icon changes for Andy. We can see that he's actually joined um, the meeting audio, which is fantastic. Right. And it just, uh, he, he's now more identifiable, identifiable into the meeting as a presenter. So more than happy for Andy to actually stay inside the meeting, um, so then we, we can collabor collaborate on the document together. Uh, so you can actually see exactly how this words would work remotely when I'm collaborating, and then how it would work as well when Andy's collaborating on, on the document. And this is totally unrehearsed. Completely unrehearsed. Did not, did not <laughs> oh, I'm, a, I'm all scared now. <laughs> we did not test this earlier, so I don't know what's going to happen. It will be perfectly fine, I'm sure. I'm yeah, sure. Okay, so the, the the people tab here, so that then provides us with an overview of everyone within the meeting. So as we come down here to the timeline, um, at the moment the timeline is just going to have functionality of, of really people entering and leaving the meeting and me presenting um, certain documentation. What I'm going to do, I'm actually going to come back and revisit this uh, shortly once we have annotated some documents and complete a couple of extra actions so we can see how actions within the meeting are actually grouped together. We do see that Andy joined late. So <laughs> it's proof and documentation. <laughs> okay, so so we we've, we've discussed the files earlier, so I, I don't want to cover that again. But I will touch on adding a whiteboard. So we can actually add a whiteboard into the area here, um, which just provides you really with a blank canvas. So adding the whiteboard in just just means that you know you can start sketching out ideas, you can start building on certain concepts. Um, I am going to keep our presentation up there, just so then we've got something physical to, to collaborate on. We can use our pencil and our laser pointer. So as we come down to the document, um, Andy, feel free, please, to, um, to, to, to start circling things. Um, I did imagine that we'd start using this page here to, to collaborate on and to actually highlight the various colors a pencil can, can use. So as you can see, right here with regards to the pencil so we've got black but we've also got red green blue and we do also have white and um, which again is more useful on more stronger and darker colors so so really when, when, when we're using the pencil here it's uh it's, it's useful as mentioned before, I'll use the same example. When we've got our sales team and a marketing team inside the same meeting, I mean, we actually want to designate specific tasks to the marketing team or to a sales team. We can, we can we can just select a, a color. So so traditionally, really, uh, I like to use blue for our sales. So I can just start circling here in blue, and say, okay, you know what, guys, I'm a sales. If you can just focus on on, on the JS document, that'd be great. And that just really helps identify which part of a document we want them to work on. 
And then if I want to go and assign something to our marketing guys, typically I, 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 I do like the color green for us. Um, so we can just say, all right, guys, listen, here it is, the HTML document, circle in green, that's yours to take on. So then when we do come back um, to review this meeting in a week's time, once we've replayed the meeting in real time, um, we can actually see, okay, what was agreed upon? Okay, it was this. Now, let's say, for instance, we change our minds. You know, actually, we want sales to focus on, on HTML, we want marketing to focus on JS. Rather than deleting it and, and uh, drawing this out again, we, we can just drag this around. So we can just sit here and we, we can just drag this over here. So really, it's much quicker. All we've done is that we've pretty swapped that around. Um, it still holds the same meaning. It just means the items are reassigned to different teams. Then ultimately, if we see the, the, these three circles in the middle here, we can just select them and then delete them. So circling and deleting there just means we just remove the annotations. Now, Andy, please feel, feel free uh, if, if you want to start actually um, contributing into this document and annotating so we can actually see exactly you know, how it works remotely as well and not just from a host point of view. Yeah, in indeed. Um, well, I, I've shared my screen so that uh, Randy can, can look and see exactly what ah, I'm seeing okay. as well. And we'll put that on right now. And there it is. Uh, so, By the way, that uh, password 1234 business is not yeah, really a good idea. No, probably not. Um, so I've, I've decided I'm going to do, do something in red, and uh, I really don't know how to do that. I'd like to talk about that or maybe yeah. uh, some of that stuff there. But one thing that I do like from this is it, it's actually very easy to remove these annotations once you put them up there as well. Just select them and uh, click on the uh, the trash can. Yeah, precisely. So, so, so the 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 concept of of this is that we understand the tools aren't aren't necessarily uh, super well in everyone, but they are simple, and we want to keep it simple and easy. And um, so, tools like these just help enhance your meeting experience. Um, and the concept is just you know, let's just quickly re remove this. Let's just throw in something extra. Okay. So yeah. We yeah. I don't, one thing I would say with that, it would be nicer. This is just just, just an observation on my part. I I believe that would be nicer with a, a thicker pencil. Okay. Okay. So so maybe kind of like um, a water brush. Yeah, a Experiment. little bit thicker line there. Um, the, the colours sort of get lost a little. Yep. Yep, I I've definitely understand from your point of view, yep, you're right. Um, I, I've, I think the initial thinking was that we didn't want it to overtake the document, but I think it would be good to have that at least stand out in a, in a, a bit a bit more in your face rather than trying to search it completely gravy. Okay, we have a question from IRC, which is, uh, what about mobile, meaning uh, does this work in mobile? Obviously, the phone call part does. Yeah. Uh, can you do the meeting in mobile, Lawrence? For sure, for sure. So at present, we, we don't necessarily have a, a mobile application, but what we do have is a fully responsive design. So now this might not work for us here. It is. So as, as you can see here, as we're scaling down to the typically the mobile phone size screen, it keeps us with a very similar experience with exactly the same functionality. The thing is, which we do have is that the layout does change very slightly off the top. So what we have is actually tabs. So we have our, our presentation tab here, our meeting info tab, our people tab, our timeline. So as you can see how that really turns into a, a full column there. And then we have our more tab. So the more tab then will provide us the information which I'm going to cover shortly. Uh, on the top bar, it actually goes into a more tab. So it gives us with a, the various options. So you still have the same meeting capability. Um, it still has the same look and feel, just a slightly variant layout to then accommodate your, your mobile phone. I'm actually trying to dial in based on the URL in, uh, on my Android phone. So you should see me trying to come in. Oh, join, yes. There it is. So we have you right there, so then we can just click allow. And you're into the meeting. All right, and I'm going to oh, allow, well, I'll allow the mic. I think we're not hearing the audio anyway, so that won't cause any problems. Um, okay. And we will now, I'll just show you, I don't know how this won't be super visible. I'm trying to get it visible before I go to the camera. Um, 
Yeah, you, you can. I could you, share. You can the, well, I can, sh I can actually share the screen, but I wasn't prepared for this. But I'm just going to show you yeah. what this looks. I mean, obviously, it's not optimal. You're looking at the out of focus. But there's the screen yeah. on my Android phone. Yeah. So, so as you can see, you still see the this, the same meeting area in the same way. It totally. just has to be tailored slightly to uh, the the my, my, mobile phone. Now, we do have an application coming shortly. Um, not too sure if Peter has a more of a specific date for us on that. Yes, you remind people. Remind. Go ahead. Sorry. No, please. No, please. Yeah. So I, I'm I'm here from sort of a more technical point of view to to answer some of these questions. Um, so as you saw on your Android phone, you got straight into the meeting full functionality WebRTC. Um, unfortunately, on an Apple device, uh, Safari does not as of yet support WebRTC. Um, so you have all of the meeting functionality except for, of course, the primary bit that is the audio. Um, you still have to dial in manually, unfortunately. Um, so to get around that, we are in the process of building an iOS application uh, to replicate the functionality on iOS. Perfect. Thanks, Peter. Perfect. Thanks. So, so yeah. So as 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 Peter mentioned there, we will then kind of you know so you can still attend the meeting uh, through your, your mobile phone with a the mobile app application coming shortly. Um, but to overcome the Safari issues as such, um, the application will then help you still use the WebRTC functionality. So I want to. So I've, I feel I mean more than happy to play around with these collaboration tools in a you know a bit more. But again, I feel you know we we mostly touched on everything here. And it'd be nice to kind of come onto our, our chat functionality down at the bottom. Also, did we answer the question with regards to working on a, a mobile device before I do yeah. move on? However, I actually have, if I can get this up real quick, here is my screen share. Now, this is uh, it's an app called Visor. So we're looking through uh, USB. Is this visible, by the way? I think it is. Yep, yep, visible. Um, if what you we're just seeing, scroll up, that'd be great. When so we can see, that's we're, it. Yeah, we're we're seeing. This is a, like an emulator. So we're looking at the screen of my uh, Android phone, and it's being shared via USB to the uh, to the to the Mac. So we're seeing, and we can see the live update of the time there, right? Twenty-seven, twenty-eight, and so on. Um, I haven't actually tried this, but <laughs> mm -hmm. should I? Hey, this uh, is yeah, live, no great. net, right? No net. All right, and well, that works. But what happened here? I'm trying to, and again, no rehearsal. I haven't tried this, so I'm on the pen. There's no guarantee that this works, by the way, because of the way it's. I'm doing it from. Let's see. Why? All right, I don't know what that is, but obviously this is this is a little bit crazy. So if we, that's the rest of it. I've got the next page thing. Is there a next page? I'm on the first page. Yeah, please feel free to. Oh, to we're, we're okay. Page. We're on the slides. I well, didn't even get that. Presenting page seven. Um, where is the whiteboard? Do I have that here? Okay, so if you click into more. Right. And then you scroll down to files. Here we go. Files. And whiteboard then. Whiteboard two. Present now. Okay. I assume present yep. now. So then if you scroll back up, you have to reselect presentation. Uh, okay, yeah. right. I think I did that. And there it is? No, is that it? Yep, that's it right there. Just at the top. Oh, the top. There. There it is. So, so, so that there is your, is your whiteboard. Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. We're on Android, right? And I'm... Creating a fantastic uh, thing on the phone. Okay. Look at that. So that well, is a phone. It's completely viable. I mean, I'm doing this on a computer screen, over USB, etc. So there's there's actually almost no lag, but a little bit. I might mention in passing, by the way, that this is an application that's free right now in beta called Visor V Y S O R. I guess it's .dot io. Um, that you can check out that connects your uh, your Android device. To uh, to a computer, okay. it, it works through. It's a Chrome app, so it works through Chrome. Uh, and I I'm kind of stealing your presentation here, but <laughs> I just want to show that though because it's kind of neat and it does seem to work just fine on Android. 
Yeah, no, it, 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 it seems like it's actually very handy, that application. De de definitely for us here, because I'm imagining that it allows you to go up your, your dev tools so you can actually see what's happening. Is right. that correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. Perfect. So, yeah, actually, that would actually be really handy for us um, because at the moment we, we just use virtual machines. Yeah, it kind of replaces the emulator, I guess. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's very cool. It's, it's by the guy who is called Kush. Okay. A pretty famous uh, Android guy. Okay. Oh, cool. Interesting. Okay. Now that I've uh, broken <laughs> the whole <laughs> flow of it. No, we were waiting for questions, and uh, I have, uh, because of the, my emulator covered IRC. So, Picasso, yeah. <laughs> right. Any other questions on IRC? ZipDX, you guys, uh, and uh, guys and gals, whatever. You folks know how to unmute by hitting star six. Anybody's got any questions there? If I could be quickly before we move sure. on to questions, if I could just quickly cover the chat fu functionality. Right, um, yeah, that's right. We were going to so, do that. So then, so, so then if, if, if we quickly cover that, um, so then at least we, we, you know, we can explain how to communicate into the meeting if for the reason um, meeting attendees or meeting hosts can't, can't dial into the meeting or use browser-based functionality. So what we have down, down the bottom here is our chat bar. Um, so this is just a, a simple chat bar functionality where you, where you can um, communicate into the meeting. But what you also have is two additional options. So we have an option here to assign a task. So if I just uh, assign a task, then select who the task is for. So um, Randy, I'm just going to assign you a quick, a quick task, task right there. So then a notification comes up, say, okay, I assigned a task to Randy. And then finally, we have our decisions. So this again, this is this is all useful stuff. When when you're in a meeting, and rather than taking your notes or your minutes to the side in a piece of paper, you take it all within the meeting, which you can come back at any time to review, and actually understand, oh, that's what was mentioned, mentioned. That's why I was assigned. That's what we agreed on, which is all visible in the timeline down the right-hand side, which allows you to group information into five separate areas. So if I just uh, toggle off here these four, so the first icon being the information just, just really gives you the, the meeting information, what's happened, you know, what, have, what, have, what have been the key moments, as we can see here, the most recent ones, rather you, you join the meeting. You can toggle it off and go to chat, so we can actually just highlight, okay, so here is the chat functionality which happened in the meeting, which is just your simple chat, so this, this could just be, you know, people just discussing items, it could be, you know, just, just passing comments possibly. And then this is where it becomes really helpful for referring back, back to meetings, and that's actually where you group your tasks and your decisions into two streams. So all of your tasks you can have viewed all the way down here. So it does update in real time, so I can just say this is a, another task. So I'm going to assign this one to Andy. And so as you come there, it actually pops up in real time, and it provides you with a timestamp. So you can see the initial uh, task was assigned at 5.37, there's the second task at 5.38. And then similar with our de de decisions here. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to update in real time as with uh, the, the task assignment. So it really allows you to kind of choose which information you want to see when you're when you're within the meeting or when you're coming back to revisit the meeting. Finally, we can see all, all of our file actions, so all the files which have been load, uploaded, what files have been presented. And then if we want to see it all, we just click our global button here and we can see everything. So the, the one more functionality which we really have within this meeting, um, which I'm, I'm not going to, to try and use because we are already sharing our screen, is actually our screen share. So you can share your screen and rather than sharing a specific tab or a specific window, you actually become presented with with a box. So I am I am going to see if I can actually show the, this box, um, this box now because this box really is powerful. Because what it means is that you can actually present any part of your screen you want to present, and it doesn't have to be a whole tab or a whole window. So what we have here is that actually. If all I want to present is our top nav nav navigation bar, then I can drag that, and that's the only part of, the sc of my screen 
I'm going to share with anyone within the meeting. So really when you're just looking at that, it means actually, let's say for instance, um, I want to share a, doc a documentation and I only, I only really want to talk about one part of it because the other part has confidential information. Um, but I really need to gain access to that, that, that document and share that, that document. I can just drag this box. I can make it as big or as small to ensure that only the vital information is being presented and any confidential information, you know, it isn't. So that, that's a really key point. Can I, can I just point out that that updated on, on my participant screen in real time. So that's adaptable. It, it's continuously uh, um, alterable. Fantastic. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that that like, updated for us there because, you know, you can never know these demonstrations, right? <laughs> So, so, so that's great. Um, I mean, we, we do have uh, additional options for them here. So we, we can st stop our screen share. We can actually pause our screen share. So this, this box remains. Um, but without having to then initiate screen share again, you can just then press play. So I'm, 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 I'm just going to go ahead and, uh, and, and um, stop, stop screen sharing. The final thing really uh, which we have here is that is our option to start recording the conference. So this is a big part of our meeting replay. Every meeting is recorded in real time, um, the visual and audio, so you can come back and view this meeting and and relive the meeting experience. Um, let, let, let's say for example when, when I'm having a marketing strategy meeting and one, one of us say our, our content guy can't make it. So rather than actually hosting the meeting again or passing on some meeting minutes, I can just share a meeting URL, it comes in, Views the meeting in real time, and you can actually experience the the true true meet meeting. Now he doesn't have to have to sit through the entire meeting, and um, he can skip to key points of the meeting, points which are possibly more more re relevant to him. And um, so there is that option, but that is really a key point to actually relive our meeting. Now the audio part of it, we can start and stop recording the meeting audio. So if there's a certain part of the audio which may, maybe we're, we're off talking for, for 10 minutes to go pick up a coffee. So rather than recording the audio for that, we can just stop that. So then that, that's not really interfering into the meeting. So the, so the audio and the visual presentation are recorded separately? Yes. In other words, in other words if you go for coffee, you, uh, presumably the slide is up or there's nothing happening visually anyway. But um, if you say you turn the audio off, this is just a dumb example, but suppose you turn the audio off and then you forget to turn it back on. If you, are, you continue to present after that, does that still record visually or is it all with the recording on and off? In other words, does the recording on and off, turn, uh, turning it yeah. on, does it record everything or does it just, record the, does it just turn audio and recording on and off? Yeah, so Peter here again, just by mm -hmm. the way. Um, so yeah, we record the events in the meeting separately from the audio. Uh, okay. So if you stop recording it, it's still going to record the events of the meeting. It's just not going to record the audio of the meeting. Um, it actually might be best if we demo the replay functionality, perhaps, and then we can show skipping through the timeline. Sure. Okay. 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 So let's So the, the, the hope here is that our meeting replay comes back into the Slack feed um, here. Now, if not, if that doesn't want to come back through, what we can do, we can log, log into our dashboard area and we, we can see how that would work there. Excluding the Slack, the whole Slack framework though, there's a URL that you could send somebody to and they will see the meeting regardless of Slack, correct? Yes, precisely. Uh, so that's they're kind of two different things. I mean, it would be nice and convenient if it all works well with Slack, but that isn't so much on your end as it is on the integration. Yeah, precisely. The point is that uh, James, who is not here with us now, if we wanted him to be able to look at all this, we could send him to this meeting uh, and with a URL. So, so Corrado yeah, asked exactly. a while back uh, how long is the information stored, and, and there's even a, a further, you know, where is it stored? It's obviously stored on one of your servers or something in your space, but the question about how long it's stored, and also I would ask, is there an export of some kind that allows a one to have the files locally, 
for any reason in case you don't have internet or if, if uh, there's a time limit on your server. These are maybe questions for Peter, but if you could go into a little bit about yeah, the storage, a, uh, Peter, go ahead. Yeah, that's a really good question. So, so currently um, it's in our own proprietary format um, and that's simply uh, for ease of our use during development. Sure. Um, what we're actually actively working on at the moment is transcoding that into uh, say a before or WebM so uh -huh. we can just provide you with a URL to a file that you can take. You can take that off our servers, you can delete it from our servers and you can do whatever you like with that file. Um, we do currently keep it um, for an indefinite time simply because we have it in our own proprietary format but we very much don't want to be keeping it that long. I mean sort of from our point of view there's no point in us keeping your recordings for a long time. I'm sure you don't want us keeping your recordings forever. Um, so we're very much sort of moving down the route of we'll give it to you um, even sort of into your cloud storage kind of thing mm. um, or as a file um, and then you own it. That's yours. You can do what you will with it. Right. Okay, thanks for clearing that up. I One other question, ex, uh, an extension of the same question. I'm channeling Carl for those of you regulars who know who Carl is, <laughs> which is, uh, <laughs> which is uh, maybe there's a plan, to, because you said WebM, which is video and audio could be. Um, is there, Would there be a plan to do JSON or some other uh, format of you know, XML, JSON, uh, that, that would be exploitable in other ways other than video? Oh, okay, so it's in the, the meeting events. Uh, right, yeah, right, so the meeting events. Right. On doing there. Yeah, so what we actually uh, are on, like I said, this is sort of early stages, we're, we're moving into that development space now. Uh, we're probably going to be using something called uh, WebVTT. I don't know if you're familiar with it, um, but it's basically... Uh, HTML5 spec mm -hmm. to put a series of events alongside a video file. Uh, so it, it's similar to how you implement uh, foreign subtitles over a video mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, in that it's a mapping of sequences um, which is really provides you sort of a scene selection of the video. So that is a sort of open standard so we would probably give you the video file and the web VTT file which means you or your player of the video could say here's an event on the timeline, I can skip straight to that event on the timeline um, or potentially do whatever you want with that additional information. Mm -hmm. And the reason I ask is because we we know here from experience that, that video slides, for example, right now the slides I've looked at, uh, possibly because we're close to, you know, we're I'm in my case I'm not that far from the UK, so everything's been crystal clear, even the tiniest print. But often when people present in video, and, and, and you know this, Peter, I'm sure, when you present video, slides as video, a lot of times artifacts come in and they're not that clear, whereas other presentation methods work well. So my question was based on you get a WebM, but maybe it's not going to be perfect video. Now, I might be wrong about that, but in our experience, we've had that problem before. Yeah, so if I just elaborate, our proprietary format, so to speak, is really just... Um, a stream of events and mm -hmm. images from the meeting, which is it's a mix of sort of HTML and PDF for the documents shared. So mm -hmm. that's why it's sort of so clear, and it's clear on the replays as well because it's just re-rendering the HTML. Um, so that's really good for crisp, clear replays, um, but it means you can't play it anywhere outside of our website. Now, in terms of sort of transcoding this to some other format that you can play anywhere, uh, since we have it in let's call it a perfect format already, there is going to be loss when you transcode it to video, but we don't necessarily have to use a lossy transcode. Right. You know, if we want to do that to, you know, any format, we can do that to as high quality as you want. Um, we'd probably provide a couple of different formats there. Right, well that's... You know, so we could provide you with sort of a, a 4K MKV if you, if you really wanted a, a 4 gigabyte meeting replay file. And obviously... You've got your what what you're calling your pro proprietary format. Obviously, that can be translated into whatever somebody wants. I mean, you'll you'll figure that out. I just want to know if you were thinking about it, which is good. Um, Lawrence, you can go yeah, back. Yeah, actually, um, go ahead, go ahead, Peter. I was just going to say, Lawrence, you can go back to to not sharing the screen because we're done with that. I think. Um, go ahead, Peter. Um, yeah. So very early stages on this transcoding thing. Mm -hmm. um, if anyone has any suggestions or things they would like it to be able to do. If you could send them over to us, that would be brilliant. Um, so, like I said, we're still in the early stages. 
we're investigating what we think are the best options for it, but we'd love to hear what you guys think are the best options as well. Okay. And by the way, um, as I said before, this is drum.com is the URL. In fact, it's, if I put myself on, you'll see it written there, I think. And um, I'm, we're looking for other questions. Otherwise, we're kind of done here. So okay. if anybody's got any questions, Andy, Michael, uh, Tim's not here with us. Go ahead. If I could just quickly say, so um, I have sure. pulled up a, an older meeting here, so then we can actually get a meeting replay for the look and feel of how it work. So right. you can see here when I'm sharing my screen, it's uh, it has turned green to 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 identify a meeting replay, and down here we get the options to skip backwards or play. So play the meeting in real time. So you see that our notifications are coming up in in the top right there. Right. And then we can we can start skipping forward. Uh, to, to the end, so that there mostly wasn't too much happening within that meeting. So as you can see here as well in the meeting, what we have. So if I want to go back to the uh, the first point where I actually add a, a documentation, I just go to the timeline. I add, I, I press the button. It takes me to that time and plays from that time. So it's unfortunately we don't have too much in here that's happening to really jump around so much. Um, but it does actually go, okay, you know, it shows you the power of how we can jump in between meetings um, and to each key points. If we want to, we can just reach them at a click of a button. Okay. Uh, Corrado reminded me of a question that I was going to ask and forgot to, which had to do with dialing in via SIP. We talked about SIP, and I mentioned, I think we were uh, on when, when I said this, that Maybe this was before we started uh, the Hangout, but that um, the thing about SIP is you either have it or you don't. So asking people to get a SIP client, blah, 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 you know, it's, it's, it's a scene. But everybody in this audience has SIP clients or phones even. So uh, Corrado's question is, is there a chance of maybe dialing in in the future via SIP URIs? Since I think your business plan doesn't include making money on phone calls, it's for you, it doesn't matter one way or the other. Yes, so that's a really good question, and, and I'm similar that I, I use a SIP client. Um, really, all you have to do is set the access number um, to the one you would dial in from a landline phone, and then just point your SIP phone at try.thisisdrum.com, where your meeting is hosted, and that will connect you straight on. No problems at all. Ah, oh, but you should have said we would have had thousands of people calling in right now on this. No, well, okay, that's that's good to know. So yeah. the the same number at did you say this is drum dot com directly? It's at, at uh, try dot this is drum dot com. Okay, try this is drum dot com. Okay. All right. So, so if if we connect via SIP, uh, what's the best codec we can connect into then? Codecs, codecs, codecs. Um, Always I'm, codecs. Um, I don't know actually off the top of my head what I would recommend. Uh, we support, we're pretty much we're using free switch uh, on the back end, so I would say whatever the default configuration there, I think Opus would be fine for general purpose usage. I don't think you're going to get a huge amount of um, you know varying quality from modifying your codex to be honest. But you're Opus. welcome to, to try octaphonic to Opus. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> octaphonic Opus. <laughs> Okay, free switch, good choice. Okay, uh, yes. Uh, yeah, and, and uh, definitely support for Opus and free switch is very good. So. Absolutely, absolutely. And um, it's obviously there's a good reason why you don't just put that in huge type on the front page of your site because people, you know, most people don't really use SIP, but at the same time, this audience would want to know, and that's very good to know. Um, we would have meant we would have messed with that. Maybe we'll do that a test uh, later next week or something just to see how it works, but that's important to know because uh, if you've got people all over the world and if they already are using SIP, why not, right? Good quality. Okay, any, th any other questions? Anybody else before we uh, ask these folks to conclude? I'm just looking at IRC. Well, I, we I'm looking at Andy. Andy, go. We, we, we haven't really talked about the business model um, and, and competitors and, and where you're, who you're actually aiming for. Are you trying to take Cisco apart? Do you want WebEx gone? you want to dominate the, uh, the, the, the landscape? And how are you going to achieve it? I think, I think everyone always wants to go in and take market do, do, domination, I'm sure. Um, is it always realistic? Possibly. Uh, really, with this solution, we are targeting the SME market uh, initially, at least. And it's, it's making meetings far more accessible, far more effective, um, and user-friendly. 
um, we, we, we want people to be using this meeting and finding benefits from the meeting rather than saying, oh, I have to go on a meeting. It's, yeah, okay, let's, uh, let's go on a meeting. We, we, we find that pretty effective. Um, we, we do enjoy that. So coming from a, a business model side of things for, for Share Anywhere, really that, that is down to someone taking the, the API key, embedding it into their service, making it a value-added service, um, which they then, you know, possibly it becomes of a part of an existing service. Um, so if if, uh, if I may, there's, there's quite a popular consultant who uses our solution for, for his vir vir virtual coffees. Um, and so he, he actually uses these as part of his solution um, moving forward to actually generate more people signing in, more interaction, which you know, you know I can assume involves more retention and and a, a growing user base. So so we we we're kind of targeting. We aren't necessarily targeting um, with share anywhere at least the WebEx users um, who who are going to be going to WebEx all the time for their meeting. It's someone who wants to have their users inside their brand's experience. It's someone who wants to say, you know what, I want to see my client inside my brand's experience. I don't want to have to worry about people join in on time, don't have to worry about actually, are they using the right piece of software or not, can they gain access, it's yep, follow a URL and we're in. Um, of course we would love to take the entire user base of, uh, of, of, of WebEx. For, uh, forgive me uh, for asking if, if this has come up and while well, I was distracted, but um, how about other browsers, how about um, OIE? Okay, okay, so our solution works exactly the same in every single browser. Um, however, we do use WebRTC um, for our browser-based communication without any additional plugins. Um, so that does mean, at present, we the browser-based audio um, is not supported inside Safari or IE. Um, but you can still enjoy the meeting to its full capacity, um, as we have done today. You, you'll just be required to dial in via, via PSTN. Okay. It, it, it's really more a question for Temesis. I, that's because you know, there, there are those people who have a plugin that, sure. that, that drop into that, but I've been tinkering with it, and um, I'm not sure that it gets beyond that with most people. The tinkering, okay. I mean. It, yeah, yeah. I, I, th I think we have had discussions beforehand. It isn't something which we followed up with. Um, it's quite interesting to, to actually hear, hear from yourself that you've been tinkering with it. And is it been something which you found useful, really, which you wanted to push forward with? or? Well, I'm not a developer, so the scope of my tinkering has been uh, driven by customer requests. And, and I had, um, since we're at the end of the hour, I can tell you, I, I had a customer who wants to do something WebRTC based or using a WebRTC service, but they faced with um, their potential target audience is a group of people in a government department where all of the computers are running Windows 7, they're all locked down, they won't install anything, right. they can't install Chrome, and it's across government departments, so compliance with, oh, let us install Chrome directives just is not going to happen. Yep. So they're looking for, you know, what can I do at some central point that will enable this? And and they're literally, it's not even Edge, it's IE. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so, we understand. Unfortunately, the Temesis uh, solution seems to be a non-starter because it requires that it be installed. It's a, an installable at the client side. Okay. Okay, so, uh, so, so surely that eliminates it really because the idea of, of, of using WebRTC is that you don't download anything. So then they ask you to download something to then enjoy browser-based communication. Well, yeah, but the, the idea that you don't download anything if everything is working ideally, but yeah. given the intransigence of Apple, definitely, and Microsoft a little bit less, um, you know, you have to have some kind of a solution to address those browser platforms. And it, it, the minute you say you need that solution, you're back to downloading something, which means you need admin rights to be able to install it, which takes it out of play in the circumstance that I was asked to look into. But um, there you go. Okay. <laughs> interesting. Always interesting to hear you know, how, how, how people have found this. So, yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. Randy. Oh, where, yeah, where I'm, I'm here. I'm here. I'm just uh, wondering where we are. I think we've covered everything. So are, is there anything that you gentlemen from Drum would like to say? Anything we haven't said? Again, I said this is drum.com is the place to go 
for the information. And I assume there's, a, I ask this of everybody, I assume there's some way to contact you on the site? Yep, yep. So uh, you, you, you can contact us through the site um, by all means. Uh, the, the email is, is info at thisisdrum.com mm -hmm. uh, if you prefer to contact us via email. Again, my, my name's here, so again, you can add me on LinkedIn, follow us on Twitter. Uh, we, we're always socialising, trying to you know, talk with people within the industry. So please, by all means, get in touch. Um, we, we do provide our web meeting solution on our web, website for free, uh, so it is embedded. So please come on, you know, give it a shout, try it, see if it is something which, you know, we, we, which could help you. Uh, it's free. And so there's nothing to lose. And as you see today, you know, I, I hope you'd agree that we do have extensive features which can help your web meetings. And by all means, if you want to have it embedded inside your website, get in touch um, and use our Slack integration. And we made it. We made it through the demo without uh, any problems. And we actually, it looks to me like we actually made it through approximately one hour, which is a great time. Thank you, Lawrence. Thank you, Peter, for joining us and giving us all that great information, too. No, thank, thank you very, very much for having us. It's, it's, it's been a pleasure uh, discussing and being able to talk about our product. Um, it's something which, which we talk about internally all the time, so to be able to talk to other people is great. Okay. Thank you, everybody who joins us and who uh, helps us out, and I'm going to stop the broadcast, and we will go to the mature audiences-only version.